let me invite everyone to sit up right <coughs> as we shall participate in pranayam breathing exercise followed by meditation for those of us who are here for the first time please follow the instructions wherever you are seated sit up right do not cross your legs where you are seated if you are in the chair sit your legs apart if you are on the ground cross your legs thumb and four fingers touching like this back of the palms resting on the knees relax the body sit upright <clears throat> together we shall breathe in and out six times slowly we shall breathe in and slowly we shall breathe out in the process of breathing out we shall chant o all together in o together let us chant the panch akshar mantra that is the five syllable mantra the syllables are na ma shi va ya always start with om <coughs> om nama let us chant the trayambakam mantra three times om trayambakam yajamahe sugandhim pushti vardhanam purvarukam eva vandanat mrityor moksha mamrita ateyo trayambakam yajamahe sugandhim pushti vardhanam <coughs> वारुकमिव वंदनाथ मृत्योर मोक्ष मामृता आते त्रयंबक यजामहे सुगंधि पुष्टि वर्धन पूर्वारुकमिव वंदनाथ मृत्योर मोक्ष 
मृताओ नम शिवाय नम शिवाय फॉर द नेक्स्ट फ्यू मिनट्स वी पार्टिसिपेट इन मेडिटेशन ब्रिंग इन द माइंड टू मेडिटेट विथ इन अपॉन द स्पिरिट विथ इन we accept in our mind some form of the divine lord we concentrate them upon that form and ideally we call the name but if you cannot identify with a particular form then taking the image of the dia or the light <coughs> that's burning in front of you take it to the center of the forehead concentrate and chant om namah shivaya in our minds महापदी महादेव की जय उसे जॉइन टुगेदर इन चांटिंग द शिव मानस स्तोत्र वे बाय वी पे ओबेसेंस टू द डिवाइन लॉर्ड शिव रत
Akshutam Keshavam Ramana Rayanam Krishna Dhamudaram Vasudevam Harim Sridharam Madhavam Gopika Vallavam Janaki Nayakam Ramachandram Vajay Akshitam Kesham Satyabhaam Madhavam Madhavam Sridharam Radhika Radhitam Indriya Mandiram Tepesa Sundaram Devati Nandanam Nandajan Sandere Vishnave Vishnave Shakine Shakine Rukumani Ragini Janiki Jani Ballavi Ballavaya Titya Tamani Kansini 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 Akshutam Keshavam Ramana Rayanam Krishna Dhamudaram Vasudevam Harim Vasudevam Harim Vasudevam Harim Krishna Chanda Bhagavan our provision today will be based upon readings from the Srimad Bhagavad Gita. But it relates to you and I in our everyday life. Medical science technology, the industrial revolution, the new age of farming, the new techniques in construction, 
all of this continues to contribute to enhance the way we live in the world. But although we have all of these enhancements, we are still living with some old illnesses. Cancer is very prevalent. Stroke and heart failure are very prevalent. AIDS have become a new discovery. But stroke and cancer, or stroke itself, has been around for quite some time. And with all of humanity's efforts, we are still failing to overcome this illness. I ask this question today before I proceed with my message. What do you or what do we all think is the one factor in our lives or two factors in life that contributes to our illness? <clears throat> what contributes to our illness? What factor contributes to our illness? Stress. Say it. Stress. Stress? like you have right now? Yeah. I can see it in Anil's face. He has a pain in his back. Right? Stress. Because the way he sits, I know he's not sitting upright. But what causes stress? That's the end result, by the way. What is the cause? What's the root cause of stress? Give the man a big hand, please. I want you to know, he didn't read my notes. Our subject today is on lifestyle, healthy lifestyle. Because the reality is our, that it is our lifestyle that contributes to our successful health condition or our not so healthy condition. It is how we live. And what is living all about? What do we do while we live, by the way? What are the things that we must do? We must eat, we must sleep, given, right? We must eat, we must sleep, we must also cleanse our body. These are called the Nitya Karma, the duty to ourselves. We must cleanse our body, we must nurture our body, we must rest our body. If we don't do all of the above, the end result is decay of the body and of the mind. Now everybody eats. Everybody sleeps and everybody eats, sleep and what? What's the third one? Cleanse the body. Everybody does the trick. Don't put your hands up now, please. Everybody does this trick. Now, if you're all doing these three, then although we are doing this, we are eating, we are sleeping, and we're cleansing the body, we know we all get ill from time to time. <laughs> we had immune system becomes low and then other elements, either external or internal, takes over, causes the body not to function the way it is supposed to function. That is, germs take over or some form of infection takes over that causes us pain, grief, anxiety and all of the above a thing which ultimately leads to stress. Because when we are not healthy, we're not happy, when we're not happy, we're stressed out. So, the question is, if we are eating, if we are cleansing our body, eating and sleeping, then what's the problem? What is causing these, these low times in our lives? Maybe we're not sleeping the right way, or we're not eating the right way, or we're not cleaning our bodies the right way. It's possible that we will find that all of our illness have some defect in one of these three areas. Now everyone says, Pandiji, I sleep. I mean, I sleep eight, nine hours a day, some people say. The question is, when do you sleep? Do you sleep during the day or do you sleep during the night? Do you sleep in the early hours of the evening or the late hours of the evening? Now, is there anyone in the medical profession here? Any doctors? Yes, there we are. So what is the recommended time to sleep? Uh, so you mean, um, meaning after six o'clock in the evening? So sometime after six, about eight, nine o'clock. But you must sleep from eight, nine o'clock, but not go to bed at two o'clock in the morning. And, and based on that, what is the, the time to rise? 
four o'clock. So if you went to bed about seven or eight, so so eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, one, two, three, four. That's eight hours sleep. That's more than a recommended daily supplement for sleep. But what is the reality? Let's let's talk to the real the people who know about this stuff, the young people. Now what's the reality? What really happens in our lives? We all sleep. There's no question about that. We know that eight hours is good, but you know that many of our young people actually sleep for ten hours. Yeah, they do. They go to bed at one o'clock in the morning and they stay till twelve o'clock in the bed the next day if they don't have nothing to do. And they said they're sleeping, by the way. But it's a very stressful sleep. As such, if, like doctor said, that we went to bed at a decent time, we would get up earlier, but we were fully energized. And that's why we have this thing called break. What is it called? Break? Break fast. Break fast. That means you're fasted and you're breaking the fast. But if you're eaten, like me, at 12 in the night, then you can't be breaking a fast six hours later or five hours later. But if you've eaten at six o'clock in the afternoon and you went to bed at eight, at four o'clock in the morning or five, you will be hungry. And your body will be saying, I need food. But our children do not eat at the right time because they've slept at the wrong time and they wake at the wrong time. Now, it might sound like I'm picking on the young people, but let's move to the grown-ups. Grown-ups are guilty of this just as much. When they have a day off, they stay in bed. I don't have to go to work, so I'm going to stay in bed. And they laze around in bed or they watch TV late because they don't have to go to work tomorrow. They'll watch TV late and then sleep late and as such. In a normality of lifestyle, we are doing things that are detriment to our life. In a normal day to day, nothing harsh, nothing with bad intention. Our normal flow is causing us pain or will bring us grief. Now, so that's the sleep factor. Well, do we want to talk about that thing called eating factor? Now, we all eat and uh, we know food contributes to our existence. Well, I want to tell you this and I, I, I'm so disturbed by this, I don't know exactly what to do. But I read an article in the Globe and Mail yesterday and it's still there, whereby the article is basically presenting certain facts based on new research that all of the dietary analysis that we've been receiving for the last 25 or 30 years are wrong. They're saying that whatever they said that caused um, uh, high cholesterol is not really the reason. Or whatever they said that caused heart attack is not really the reason. It says when they blamed it on diet, it was wrong. All the food that they told us not to eat is actually okay to eat. But the writer of the article, in the end of it, having been totally confused like you and I are, by the scientist, says, there's nothing wrong with eating what you like, as long as you use proper balance of what you're intaking, and you have a regular diet without, over, without any excesses in any way, exercise and resting. He says, your lifestyle will determine that you'll be healthy if you don't follow none of these dietary things. By the way, the people who are restricted to diets are people who already are ill. You're diabetic, you've got to stick to that diet. You're this, you've got to stick. But before you became ill, the normality of diet would be eat regularly, three square meals as they say, make sure you don't overeat, don't eat things that are hard to digest, and so on and so on and so on. Make sure that you go through the process at the right time, with the right, and by the way, eating with the right attitude. Oh, you mean you have an attitude when you eat? Oh, it's amazing what kind of attitude we have eaten. Now the idea of what is the state of mind when we're eating? Whatever we consume has to be digested by our digestive fluids. If you're very upset with someone, you know what happens? Your entire digestive system goes crazy. You start getting heartburn and everything happening to you because you're upset. Your system is not performing on the normal conditions. And as such, the food that we've eaten, the body is not able to extract the true energy from it or the true, true elements that comes with it because 
our digestive system, the anabolic and metabolic processes are limited or they're overacting or not acting properly, thus we get the wrong results. Now, by the way, I want you to know I am not a doctor, neither am I a dietitian. I'm just a human being who likes to eat like everybody else. But the reality is that lifestyle is important. Now, I told you that I'll be reading from the scriptures about this. And all I've been talking about is diet and lifestyle and cleansing our body and sleeping. Does the scriptures talk about this? Oh, yes. This age that we call sannyas or the brahmachari age, the age of being a brahmachari, the age of being a disciplined student. And by the way, everybody, one time or the other in our lives, are students. And truly, if we come to realization, we never stop being students. We're always learning. But in the Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavan Krishna says that we start out the four stages of life with the Brahmachari stage, the stage of learning. And when we think of learning, the natural process is academic. But more than anything else, we need to learn about the self and the lifestyle that we need to live so that we can maintain the healthy self at all times. But therein lies our great challenge. We can go to any school in the world. If we study hard, we can progress to any profession. But if we do not pay attention to lifestyle, then that simple everyday activity that we ignore will be more detrimental to our life than anything else. So what are the lifestyle things that we need to think about? 